Well, good morning, everyone. Wow, what a nice full house. Thank you all for coming out. So welcome to the 19th annual John D. Spellman Awards for Achievement in Historic Preservation. I'm Jennifer Meisner, and again, thank you for joining us this morning as we recognize exceptional work being done all around the county to celebrate and preserve our heritage and revitalize our communities. It's really nice of you all to come out today. We're really delighted to be holding this year's awards program here in Issaquah. Um, Issaquah has been, become one of our most active regional partners in recent years, thanks to the city's leadership and the leadership of the Issaquah Historical um, Museums in expanding the city's uh, inventory of historic resources and nominating several city-owned properties to be locally designated landmarks. So we really appreciate the city's dedication to preservation here in Issaquah. It's also wonderful to gather in the heart of Issaquah's vital downtown district, um, which the Downtown Association, the Issaquah Downtown, Asso downtown Issaquah Association, really works tirelessly to promote with special programs and events that really draw people into Issaquah to, to experience um, the special culture here. Um, and I don't think we could have asked for a more perfect venue than uh, the Village Theater first stage. If you had a chance to take a look at the um, photo gallery out in the lobby, you'll already know that this is actually a new building. This building was constructed about 10 years ago to replace um, the original 1913 building that was unfortunately destroyed by a devastating flood. So I think the Village Theater did a really terrific job in um, really replicating the historic feel of the original building while updating it with some state-of-the-art equipment and, and some more modern amenities. So um, it's really a, great to be here. So um, these wards are named for John D. Spellman, who served as the first King County Executive from 1969 to 1980, after which he was elected governor of the state of Washington, a position he held from 1981 to 1985. Uh, during his term as King County Executive, Governor Spellman laid the foundation for preservation in King County as we know it today. He initiated the first countywide survey of historic resources. He was instrumental in passing the ordinance that created our preservation program and that created the Landmarks Commission. So as we celebrate incredible accomplishments in historic preservation every year, um, we honor the rich legacy of John D. Spellman. So at this time, I'd like to invite all current and former Landmark Commissioners to stand and be recognized. Everyone, don't be shy, stand up. Special commissioners, former commissioners. Thank you so much. I say this every year, but we so appreciate uh, your dedication to this important work. It's not always easy, and we really appreciate the time um, that you put into serving as, as commissioners for us. Um, I'd also like to thank this year's award winners and their project partners for all your hard work and perseverance and also for coming out to celebrate with us uh, this morning. I'd like to acknowledge For Culture. I know we're joined by a number of For Culture staff members. Do you guys want to wave as well? There they are. Um, for for Culture's uh, funding and expertise contributes to the success of count countless projects every year, and um, we're so proud to be able to partner with For Culture to really advance preservation here in King County. And a uh, special thanks to our, pro our, our program sponsors, the City of Issaquah and Issaquah History Museums for hosting the lovely reception this morning. Let's give them a hand, thank you. Downtown Issaquah Association for your help in promoting this event. Thank you. I know we have a great turnout, largely in part because you guys did such a great job of promoting. And again, Village Theater for making this wonderful space available to us. And finally, I'd like to thank all the elected officials who have joined us today for your ongoing support for historic preservation in your own communities. So thank you. Um, and at this time, I'd like to introduce uh, the Honorable Mary Lou Pauley, who is the mayor of the city of Issaquah, and she's going to say a few words of welcome. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Welcome to Issaquah. We are so proud and excited to host this year's event. 
Uh, when I moved to Estacado 25 years ago, the town was much smaller, and its historical downtown core was an absolute treasure, something that I have never, ever lived in a city that had something like that. 25 years later, we go out to the community and we talk about what's important, and one of the very things at the top of the list is please make sure that what's going on in Old Town, its character, its unique charm and style, is protected in everything we do going forward. This town absolutely loves its historic core and all that's going on. So many people cite the appearance of Issaquah's downtown area, often described as quaint and charming, as one of the reasons they love living here and they love visiting. We all owe a debt of gratitude to those who came before us and made Issaquah the great place that it is today. Historic preservation is one way to honor those who helped shape our community. Meanwhile, historic preservation also helps to build neighborhoods and encourages economic growth. I'm grateful that Issaquah's historic downtown is home to a number of historic buildings that contribute to the community's affection for its downtown, including four King County landmarks, the Hailstone Food, Food Store, Feed Store, which is the home to our Downtown Issaquah Association, the Issaquah Depot, which is behind us today. If you haven't visited, it'd be nice to walk by. Gilman Town Hall, where Issaquah History Museums is located, and the Issaquah Auto Freight uh, Building. From the Hailstone Feed Store to the Depot, several of these buildings still host vibrant community events, where our residents and visitors are making new memories and their own histories. Meanwhile, we are so fortunate to have an active, engaged historical society to help preserve our past and to bring Issaquah's stories to life. Thank you to the Issaquah Histories Museum. Just two years ago, Issaquah celebrated its 125th birthday. We have a lot to celebrate, including our beautiful natural environment, our outstanding quality of life, and our deep community pride. While many things have changed over the past 125 years, Issaquah's beauty and sense of community, which is deeply rooted in our history, remain timeless. While you visit Issaquah today, I encourage you to visit one of our historic landmarks here in Old Town, which are all within walking distance. And we are so grateful to have you here and welcome you here today. Thanks. Thank you, Mayor Polly. I'd like to introduce Chris Moore now, Executive Director of the Washington Trust for Historic Preservation. Chris is going to tell you about an exciting local grant opportunity. Come on up, Chris. Thank you, Jennifer. It's um, a pleasure to be here today. I'm Chris Moore, the Executive Director with the Washington Trust for Historic Preservation, and it's great to follow up on the mayor because what I'm uh, pleased to announce is an opportunity to continue to preserve some of that historic downtown core and retain the vibrancy and activity uh, that so many people cherish here in Issaquah. Um, I am pleased to announce a second round of funding to help rehabilitate landmarks within the city of Issaquah. Um, we don't really have an official name for the program other than the Issaquah Landmark Grant Program, but this uh, funding is from the city of Issaquah through a memorandum of agreement that resolved adverse effects um, that occurred at the former Anderson Farmstead. And so we're in our second round of funding. I think the first round, you heard a couple of the landmarks mentioned here in the city. Uh, the Auto Freight Building and the Depot. Um, uh, a big congratulations to the Issaquah History Museums and Erica Manias. I know er there's Erica, I see her. Despite the bright lights, I can still see you out there. Um, they've just completed redecking the depot, so if you do get a chance, it's just right behind us. Go take a look at that project. And they're still in the midst of finishing up some significant rehabilitation work to the auto freight building. And both of those projects were supported in part through funding from this program. And so I wanted to announce that we will be doing a second round of funding, the deadline for which will be March 4th. So there's quite a bit of time to get ready We'll be holding a public workshop here in Issaquah. It is specifically for listed landmarks. So if you've got a building that is eligible but not yet listed, we encourage you to work with Jennifer and her crew to consider a landmark listing. If you already are a listed landmark, uh, you can certainly consider applying directly for funds. Uh, funding is between $5,000 and $50,000, so it can go a long way to help with your rehabilitation projects. So we're very, very excited about that and um, look forward to getting 
uh, getting information out about workshops and assistance with applications. So be sure to contact us if you have any questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chris. So yes, if you have a property that you're even thinking about landmarking, call me. I have cards here. Let's, let's get it going. Um, and now I'd like to introduce Christy True. She's the director of the King County Department of Natural Resources and Parks, which houses the, our preservation program. Christy's going to present uh, certificates of designation to owners of recently designated buildings. Thanks, Christy. Excited, uh, very excited to be here. The first one is the Enumclaw Masonic Hall. The Masonic Hall is Enumclaw's second locally designated landmark. The hall was built during a period of phenomenal growth of fraternal organizations across the United States, spanning the late 1800s and early 1900s. Membership in these civic and fraternal organizations offered vital social networks in developing towns and cities at the beginning of the 20th century. And community life during this period in Enumclaw revolved in part around about a dozen local fraternal lodges. The Masonic Hall was one of the most prominent ones. It was built in a modest classical revival style representative of early 20th century meeting halls. This building is significantly associated with the establishment of Enumclaw as a thriving town when it served as a transportation and supply hub for surrounding agriculture, which it still does, lumber and mining operations. For over a hundred years, the hall has served as a gathering and meeting space for Enumclaw's clubs, community groups, and civic organizations. In 1995, the Enumclaw Plateau Historical Society bought the building and began restoration work. When Ray Stell, President of the Enumclaw Plateau Historical Society, please come up and accept your certificate of designation for the Enumclaw Masonic Hall. No, Ray. Anybody else? Enumclaw? All right. Well, we will make sure. Uh, it's a lovely building. So moving on, uh, this one is very, very interesting, I think, and it's the Lunar Roving Vehicles, or LRVs, <laughs> are history's first and only crewed surface transportation system designed to operate on the moon. At its Kent Washington-based space center, the Boeing company designed, tested, and built these vehicles for NASA to use in its Apollo J-class missions in the early 1970s. Designated for transport of two astronauts, their life support systems, and scientific equipment, the LRVs allowed the astronauts to travel greater distances on the lunar surface and collect more scientific samples than any previous Apollo missions. These vehicles were and are remarkable feats of engineering, which resulted in the development of new technology and design solutions that have reverberated throughout the years since then. Now, these engineering ideas can be found at the core of countless scientific and te technolo technological advances since the time of the Apollo missions. The three LRVs used in the Apollo missions 15, 16, and 17 are still there on the visible side of the moon's surface, nearly 240,000 miles away from Earth. They remain untouched where they were left at the end of their last missions. We applaud the city of Kent for their broad and visionary and persistent determined campaign to celebrate Kent's distinguished historic connection to America's aerospace missions, both then and now. So would Dana, Mayor Dana Ralph come forward, as well as Michelle Wilmot, and maybe there's some others from Kent's economic development team. Absolutely. 
Okay, right back to here in, uh, in Issaquah, the Issaquah Auto Freight Building. I think we've heard it mentioned a couple of times, but let me tell you about it. So um, Italian immigrant brothers, Remo and Frank Castagno, built the Issaquah Auto Freight Company building in 1939 at the south edge of downtown Issaquah, just two blocks south of the Sunset Highway. The building expanded the Castagno's existing freight hauling business and served as the company's garage and warehouse into the 1950s. The Castagno started out as Castagno Brothers Auto Freight in the early 1920s, hauling milk from the Hobart area to the creamery in Issaquah. In 1928, they bought the Issaquah Auto Freight Company, expanding their influence on the local auto freight market and serving a variety of individual and commercial customers hauling everything from pianos to eggs to auto parts. A truly vernacular structure, the warehouse was built, was built largely out of reclaimed materials. I love that. Um, <laughs> including heavy wood structural beams from black diamond coal bunkers and a variety of exterior claddings from corrugated metal to a mix of horizontal and vertical wood sheathing. Even after the Castagnos moved their hauling business to Renton in the 1960s, they continued to use the warehouse for storage and lease it out for light industry. The Issaquah Historical Society bought the building from the Castagno family in 1989 and undertook a major rehabilitation in 1991 to address significant deterioration throughout the structure. Today, the 80-year-old building serves as a place to storage store larger museum pieces and as a workshop for constructing exhibits for the historical society now called Issaquah History Museums. And I'd like to invite Erica Manias with the Issaquah History Museum to come up and accept your certificate of designation. Uh, the last one is the uh, Ronnie Rom House. It's among the oldest surviving residential structures in the King County community of Fall City. It was built in 1904 at the heart of the original town plat, just a block from the banks of the Snoqualmie River and adjacent to the imposing 1895 Masonic Hall. In its original form, the house was a modest middle-class cottage nicely detailed with turned and jigsaw millwork. Despite some alterations that occurred in the mid 20th century, its scale, simplicity, and some of its modest Victorian area architectural detail still echo the earliest stock of vernacular housing in this mill-oriented river town. The cottage, which functioned, which functioned as a rental property for most, if not all of its, its history, reflects the community's formative years as it grew into a mill town and an agricultural center served by steamboats, wagon roads, and the railroad. The Fall City Masonic Lodge bought the cottage in 1965 and owned it nearly 54 years, continuing to use the house for rental income. The lodge sold it to Historic Seattle Preservation Development Authority this past May. Historic Seattle plans to rehabilitate the house using funds from For Culture and King County's Preservation Action Fund, then resell it and use any proceeds from the sale to replenish the fund for future projects. Tremendous thanks to Historic Seattle for their leadership in saving this unassuming but significant workers' cottage and giving it new life. Will Kai Kelly please come up and accept the certificate of designation? And just in closing, I, I want to say um, to both our, the folks who have uh, gotten their landmarks designated today, but all of you who are the champions of our historic properties, I want to thank you because we know that it takes a special passion and heart and tenacity 
to preserve uh, this, this built environment and our history. So thanks to all of you uh, for your tenacity and work in this. Thank you, Christy. And now it's my pleasure, as always, to introduce King County Executive Dow Constantine. Dow is committed to making King County a welcoming community where every person can thrive. And the achievements we are recognizing today all serve to further these values. Whether sharing the untold stories of our diverse residents, highlighting a community's connection to an important historical event, serving a community as a business anchor for more than a century, or restoring a building that contributes to the scale and character of a historic downtown, each of these accomplishments is truly in line with Dow's vision for a welcoming and prosperous region. Dow, thank you for articulating a vision for King County that we all can aspire to, and for continuing to be a vocal supporter of our efforts to celebrate our heritage and save places that matter. Please come up and present this year's awards. Thank you so much, Jennifer, and uh, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Issaquah. Uh, Mayor Polly, thank you for hosting us today in your beautiful city, and thanks to Village Theater for hosting us here at First Stage. It's, uh, it is exciting uh, to be able to be in a place that is so wrapped up in preserving its heritage and, of course, inviting all the rest of us to come enjoy it and leave some dollars behind. Thank you. Uh, to Christy True, our department director, thank you for your commitment to uh, making this relatively little part of your portfolio uh, uh, important and healthy and, and continuing. Uh, Christy's in charge of vast stretches of open space and, and wastewater treatment and solid waste. She has these big, big jobs to do, but she never loses sight of the importance of the historic preservation work that uh, is King County's charge, so thank you. And Jennifer Meisner, uh, our wonderful historic preservation officer, whom I met uh, at the Washington Trust, actually, uh, when I was a uh, not very well-attending board member at the Washington Trust. <laughs> I was busy, but I cared a lot. Thank you so much for bringing your talents to King County, and uh, I can always count on you whenever I pass by a structure that I start wondering about, I just text you and say, what's going on with this? And you will get me the answer and tell me what I can do to help, so thank you. And of course, we're talking about uh, historic preservation uh, structures uh, 100 years old in some cases, maybe even older, like the city of Issaquah at 125 plus years. But of course, this city and all of our region is built on the lands of the indigenous peoples uh, who have been here since time immemorial. And we always, I know you want to join me in remembering and recognizing uh, that. Uh, it is um, an honor to be back in Issaquah. When I was a uh, uh, younger man, uh, we would travel through with my family on the way to the mountains, and there was exactly one thing one knew about Issaquah, and that was the Triple X root beer drive in had to stop there. It was either there or George's Bakery in North Bend. Those were two, two choices for a sugar fix on the way to uh, skiing. But I, I have to say that what has been done here, uh, stretching back decades, really, uh, to create a great historic downtown is a, a wonderful example for other parts of our region. Uh, let us dive into the awards, starting with our first award. The Vashon Maury Island Heritage, Heritage Association recently presented two exhibits that amplify the stories of underrepresented groups within the Vashon community. The first is their exhibit on the Japanese American experience on Vashon Island. It was assembled in partnership with organizations including the Friends of Mukai, the Vashon Japanese American Research Project, and the Vashon Maury Island Land Trust. Now, you'll bear with me as I try to pronounce this next word, but it was called Hikikomo Gomo. It's literally that long, and it translates to joy and heartache. Now, the story starts with the emigration from Japan uh, to our region in the 19th and 20th centuries and the growth of Vashon's vital and integral uh, Japanese community. Using personal stories, the exhibit described the intense trauma and loss experienced by Japanese families and by Japanese Americans 
as the, and the island as a whole during the Second World War. It then explored the recovery and evolving identity of the Japanese American community in the subsequent years. As this acclaimed exhibit drew to a close, the Heritage Association turned its attention to another underrepresented group. See, the 2000 census showed that Vashon Island has the state's largest per capita LGBTQ population. Yet association members saw a real lack of representation within the historical narrative. This was addressed through the museum's current exhibit running through March 2020, in and out, being LGBTQ on Vashon Island. Since opening in June, it has been a great success in terms of both community engagement and fundraising. 650 visitors attended the opening, the largest first night crowd in the museum's history. Symbolically accessed through a closet passage, the exhibit leads visitors through a timeline, clever, uh, of events and individual stories. It extends beyond the museum walls, though, into an outdoor AIDS garden and ultimately into the larger community through a queer film series hosted by the Vashon Theater. The association bridges the divide between past and present and showcases our distinct yet interconnected stories or histories. We applaud the Vashon Maury Island Heritage Association for sharing stories and perspectives that needed telling and for raising the voices of our neighbors, our friends, our fellow community members. Will the members of the Vashon Maury Island Heritage Association Board please come up and accept the 2019 John D. Spellman Award for Exemplary Achievement in Interpretation. Okay, so uh, my name is Brian Brino, president of the board of directors of the Heritage Museum. I have with me Elsa Kroonquist, our executive director, and Rita Brogan, who was very involved in the Japanese uh, exhibit. And I just wanted to thank the preservation board and the county for this award. I also want to give a shout out to For Culture, who is a big supporter of our museum. And I want to explain how we do these. Um, it started with uh, a local uh, neighborhood group that did it, uh, put together, they developed and curated a show on the Chautauqua movement that was in their neighborhood. And we used this model for our Japanese exhibit and our LGBTQ uh, exhibit, where the exhibit was really developed, curated, and put together by community groups. They fundraised, they put together the show and stuff, and it's really, the, the both exhibits have been attendance breakers, um, especially the LBGTQ one, and it's really uh, improved our relationship with the community. We've made a lot of friends. Regionally, we have people coming to these, uh, these shows, and it's really, it, working with community groups to develop these shows has really helped us with our budget, uh, fundraising, and coming up with great ideas for, like Dow said, underserved uh, historic uh, things. So uh, I'm really proud of the fact that we use the community and the community puts these together and it's, it's made our organization really stronger. I'd also like to mention that Friends of Mukai, Mukai Farm, um, it's, have, uh, are renovating the property, and they have all the materials from the Japanese show at the Mukai Farm. They're open on weekends, um, not every weekend, but I encourage you, if you come to Vashon, check out the Mukai Farm, um, and you'll see all the materials from the Japanese show. Um, you can find them at mukaifarmandgarden.org. Um, it's really worth the trip to check it out, and uh, if you're on the island, come see our In-N-Out show. It's awesome. Thank Thanks. Okay, let's go this way. Scoot over a little, you guys. That's great. And, uh, Our second award. The Sunset Garage has been a prominent cornerstone in downtown North Bend for nearly 100 years. 
It was opened in 1922 by Harry Snyder in a former livery stable. The garage began as a repair shop and auto parts supplier, becoming a Durant Motors uh, dealership in 1925, and then a Buick dealership after Durant halted production in the late 20s. Shortly thereafter, the original wooden building was demolished and replaced with the current art, modern, influenced heavy timber and concrete structure. The Sunset Garage opened for business in October of 1929, the very same month as the stock market crash. According to family stories, the garage survived the Great Depression due to Harry's proven knack for keeping old cars running. In the 1960s, Harry Snyder sold the garage to the Glazier family, who still own it today. Although the garage stood empty for the last quarter century, it hasn't been idle. In the 1990s, the second floor was used to film jail scenes for the television series Twin Peaks. Ask me about our creative economy initiative. And local businesses displayed their goods in the prominent corner window overlooking Bendigo Boulevard and North Bend Way. Working through the, his company, Carbonite Properties, Craig Glazer recently took on the challenge of restoring the family's historic buildings and helping re revitalize North Bend's downtown commercial core. The Sunset Garage was at the top of the list. After making interior improvements in 2014, Craig began welcoming local businesses back into the building. And in 2018, he turned his attention to the exterior, embarking on a large-scale restoration and rehabilitation of the iconic garage's facade. With the help of a Four Culture Landmarks Capital Grant, Craig reopened the front bay drive through rebuilt the tile-pent roof awnings at the top of the building, and rebuilt the flat metal suspended awning around the northeast corner of the building. Because of current street widths and modern code requirements, Craig couldn't extend the awning to its original depth. So he built it out as far as he could to create a visual approximation of the original awning. Anyone who's met Craig can attest to his indelible enthusiasm. So it should come as no surprise that he and his partners at uh, Volition Brewing Company recently completed a stunning rehabilitation of the Glazer's Dry Goods Store just up the street. His long vacant, this long vacant building now serves as a gathering spot in the heart of downtown North Bend. Craig's efforts have served as a catalyst for other downtown property owners to invest in their own buildings and to help support new businesses that residents and visitors can visit and enjoy. So I'm pleased to present the 2019 John D. Spellman Award for Excellence in Restoration to Craig Glacier. You know, I hear uh, Mayor Polly talk about how the citizens of Issaquah um, just love and, and look at downtown Issaquah and how quaint it is and how it wants to make them live here and enjoy it. Uh, my family's been in North Bend for 110 years and growing up there, I'm 47, so I've been there. I was gone for a little while, came back. And uh, there's a lot of people out in North Bend who have always said, downtown is just so bleak. And uh, I, I, I'm just so enthused about where North Bend is headed. And there's, there's a lot of people that, uh, are a part of that success. And I'll even start with Todd Scott was the first one. I, I moved back, I lived in Bend, Oregon for 14 years after college and came back and called Todd Scott and he just kind of gave me the roadmap saying, here's all the stuff you need to know. Here's everything you need to, you know, here's an avenue here, here's one here, here's a person here. So a personal thanks to you, Todd, for really helping me, even even help me to this day on new stuff that I need to know in order to make downtown North Bend, one of the funnest places, small little towns you're ever going to visit. And it's just going to get better and better. Mm -hmm. And then as, uh, as, as we make downtown fun, uh, nobody can do it alone. Uh, you know, For Culture and the Landmarks Commission and all the people who are there are so helpful. It's unbelievable. And then boots on the ground. Daniel Jansen, who is a, a very close friend of mine, we met at a coffee shop, Pioneer Coffee, actually over in the Birches Building about four years ago, three years ago and have just teamed up 
to do all these renovations of the historic buildings. He was also a big part of the Woodman Lodge uh, restoration in downtown Snoqualmie, as well as numerous other projects. And we meet for coffee virtually every other morning in downtown North Bend and talk about how we're gonna make North Bend just better and better every single day. And so I'm so excited. Wait till you see North Bend. Give me another five years and keep helping me. You guys are gonna come visit and you're gonna go, holy moly. And all those people from Issaquah are gonna be like, we're moving to North Bend. <laughs> so anyway, thank you very much. Our third award. Now in keeping with the theme of celebrating downtown revitalization efforts, I am delighted to be able to introduce to you Patrice Fry, President and CEO of the National Main Street Center, who will present our next award. Patrice oversees the center's work to promote economic prosperity in historic downtowns across the country. The National Main Street Center has about 1,800 members and has participated in the renewal of more than 2,000 older commercial districts over the past three decades. Please welcome Patrice Fry. Hi, everyone. Uh, well, I'm back in town after living 25 years away in various places, Chicago, DC, Santa Barbara, randomly, but I grew up in Kent, so it was a, real, a lot of fun to meet the mayor of Kent this morning. Congratulations. <laughs> Count me as one who didn't know that the rover was manufactured right down, right down in the valley. That's really exciting. Um, my husband and I moved here to the city of Issaquah all of three weeks ago, um, and it is so much fun to be back home. Um, I run an organization called Main Street America. We are based in Chicago, although opening a Seattle office soon. And uh, our job is to support communities in their downtown and their neighborhood commercial district revitalization efforts. We really believe at Main Street America that Main Streets are vital to quality of life and they're vital to the economic health of communities. And I think you've seen threads of both of those things uh, in the remarks that many people have made today. So you all have a wonderful program here in Issaquah, the Downtown Issaquah Association. And I wanna give a shout out to Christina Bruning, who's the chair there. Uh, and you have a wonderful state Main Street program, which is led by Brianne Durham. Where is Brianne? Brianne, do you and Craig know each other? It seems like there's a natural, <laughs> You two should meet because, Craig, what we do at Main Street, what Brianne does at Washington Main Street is support people like you, communities like you, in making vibrant places uh, come back to life. Uh, so it is my distinct honor to be with you today to uh, present an award um, and uh, award to the, uh, the John D. Spellman Award for uh, legacy business owners. And this is really an award that was, I understand the, the, exec, uh, the county executive created this award last year really as a way of honoring the outstanding work that our small businesses do in uh, helping create that quality of life in communities and also helping really um, reinforce the economic health of our communities. Um, so I am honored to present the award to Fisher Meats, which is right across the street. And I hope you won't hold it against me that I haven't been here, remember, or I haven't been there yet. Remember, I've only been there, been here for three weeks. Um, but we're very excited to present the award today. So Fisher Meats opened in 1910. So I guess you're going on your 110 year anniversary. It was opened by John Fisher, who was a German sausage maker. It was stayed in the family, it sounds like, through the 1950s. Um, John's sons, Nick and George, took it over. And then the Cakey fam family, Chris and Jackie, purchased it in 1981 and still run it today. And I understand Chris is out on a vacation, a very well-earned vacation, uh, but we're gonna be able to welcome some of the other parts of the Fisher family up here in just a minute. 
Um, so Chris grew up in South Seattle and uh, started working at his uncle's butcher shop uh, at, the, at the age of 14. And he said that taking over Fisher Meats was really uh, the dream, the fulfillment of a dream of a lifetime. And his remarks struck me because he, he talked about how businesses like his are change are surviving in a changing world. You, you may all have heard a little bit about the way we shop is changing and that's having a real impact on our Main Street retailers, um, including uh, uh, folks like Fisher Meats. And his secret, and indeed I'd say the secret that most retailers have when they're succeeding is they don't try to compete with the big businesses, right? They're not trying to com compete with Costco or Fred Meyer. Instead, what they're doing is something different. They are uh, really emphasizing quality of product and they're emphasizing um, quality of the customer experience. Um, and so I am going to go over after we meet today and I'm going to put in an order for a turkey and I'm going to get something for dinner and I'm going to really put your skills to the test and, and my own skills to the test because I, you know, I, I understand real emphasis on customer service. Uh, I'm looking for advice for someone who tends to both burn and undercook things at the same time. So I'll give you a little bit of time to think about what your recommendations are. Uh, but I want to commend the Keiki family and everybody who's really part of the Fisher uh, Meats family for everything they do to create a business that really contributes to the quality of life here in Issaquah. And um, I'm delighted to present the John D. Spellman Award for Legacy, uh, Legacy Business to Fisher Meats. And we are going to welcome uh, Rachel Lachman, who is the daughter of Chris, as I understand, and Josh McGee up to the, the stage to accept the, the award. Um, wow, this is awesome. So uh, my name is Rachel Lockman. I am Chris's youngest daughter. Um, as they mentioned, my parents couldn't be here today. They're actually celebrating my mom's retirement um, with a nice sunny trip to Mexico. And yes, very well earned. My dad is one of the hardest working guys you would ever meet. Um, he did write a little something, so I'll read that. Um, and then fill in the gap. So um, we want to thank Executive Constantine and the King County Landmarks Commission for this prestigious award. We also want to thank the Fisher brothers and family for giving us the opportunity to carry on the legacy that was started by their father, John Fisher, way back in 1910. Most importantly, we want to thank the Issaquah community for supporting Fisher Meats for all these years. Um, I'm a little bit glad my dad is not here because that is literally probably all he would have said and he would have <laughs> gladly hopped off the stage. Um, but for me, it's an opportunity to brag on my dad and my family. Um, oh gosh. Oh. <laughs> my dad is so proud. He's so proud of what he has done at Fisher's um, and the business that he and my mom have built over the almost 40 years, um, which is an incredible accomplishment, especially with um, the changing economy and the, the change in the ways that people shop. Um, they have stayed true to who they are as a business and the quality product and um, the customer service that they provide. And that is what has carried them through um, all these many, many changes. Um, it truly is a family business. I love the picture that's in here because my, both my mom and my sister are in it <laughs> working. We all work during the holidays. Um, and I didn't introduce Josh, I'm sorry. This is Josh McGee, um, my dad's right-hand man. And he not only treats this business as a family business for us who are literally his family, but also for all the guys that work there, um, both past and present. I think if you ask them, they would say that my dad truly treats them like family. Um, which again contributes to the success and what makes it so unique and such a special part of this downtown Issaquah um, area. So, sorry, I did not mean to get emotional. Oh my gosh, that was crazy. So anyway, thank you so, so much um, for this incredible award and recognition. My dad was, is truly, truly proud and I know he would love to be here today to recept or get this award, but um, I'm honored to be here as well. So thank you very much. Congratulations once again, and thank you, Patrice, for honoring us uh, with your presence today. Our 
Fourth award is for heritage promotion. And you've heard a little bit about this already, but I'm excited to be able to present this award in recognition of the 50th anniversary of the moon landing. The city of Kent launched a campaign to designate the lunar rovers still on the moon as community landmarks. Kent became the first community on Earth to give landmark protections to an historical artifact that sits nearly a quarter million miles away. I mean, depending on the day. And this campaign also celebrated the crucial role of Kent and Boeing in the success of the later Apollo missions. The city's efforts brought people out in droves to speak about their connection to the lunar missions. Now retired Boeing engineers who built the rovers told stories about their work in the early 1970s while cheerfully disagreeing about who had the harder job and who was making the job harder. High school teachers and university professors spoke of using the rovers as models for their STEM courses, inspiring future scientists and engineers to dream and think and create. Kent's local and state level designation campaigns build, campaign builds on precedents led by, or set by California and New Mexico, the first two states to include lunar objects and structures in their historic registers. But the city's campaign did not stop there. The land the next lunar rover effort continues to promote Kent's connections past and future to American scientific ambitions in space. The Lunar Rover STEM Festival was designed to engage kids' imaginations in hands-on science and math activities. The city has also been raising funds to develop a large-scale interactive Lunar Rover, Rover exhibit in Kent's Kearson Park. I commend the city of Kent and the Kent Downtown Partnership for their creative vision, their enthusiasm, and their strong public engagement efforts to promote the Lunar Rover's historic connection to Boeing and to Kent. I'd like to invite Mayor Dana Ralph and Economic uh, Development Manager Michelle Wilmot to come forward and accept the 2019 John D. Spellman Award for Achievement in Heritage Promotion. Thank you so much. This has been an incredible team effort. This is what happens when a city and a business like Boeing and a downtown partnership and a community, a historical society, everybody comes together to honor the legacy. We are so proud, hate to say it, but over the moon, um, <laughs> about, about this. The King County Landmarks Commission and the commissioners, um, the guidance of our amazing application writer, um, everyone to bring this to reality. We have essentially been able to build a virtual fence around something on the moon. We know we're going back there, right? That's what the conversation is. And the fact that there are so many people that didn't know this was a part of Kent's history, we wanna make sure that that ends, right? I want everyone to know that this technology is created in the Kent Valley is here and set the foundation. And more importantly is literally inspiring our innovators of the future. Um, this is something through this project, the recognition that we got as the landmarks, uh, as this landmark happened, that we have been able to take a whole new generation of kids and get them excited about space, get them excited about science, and understand that the possibilities are absolutely limitless. I'm going to recognize Michelle Wilmont. I need her to come right here and stand next to me. Um, she has been the driving force behind this. This was 100% her vision kind of said, are you kidding me? Can we do this? And she's made it possible. Um, Michelle, I am so grateful for all the work that you have done. We as a city are so grateful and um, could not have done this without you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I want to say... I just, I have to absolutely thank Sarah Martin. She is a phenomenal architectural historian who would... Um, I don't think we would be here without her amazing application that she submitted to King County Landmarks Commission. Uh, the photos in there that I am reading the stories of all of the historic amazing innovations that happened in our community, seeing the amazing fo photos of the lunar rovers on the moon today turned me into an absolute space <laughs> fan. I love it. It's been one of the most fun projects of my entire career. 
And I've loved meeting all of these phenomenal people who worked on the Apollo program that are still around in our community today. And if you all come to our lunar rover replica unveiling on October, or excuse me, not October, November 14th at Shower Center, um, you'll get to meet some of them too. Thank you all very much. Thanks again, and congratulations to all our award winners. Back to you. Well, I just want to echo the thanks again to everyone, and what, and what an amazing program today. And, and thank you all again for coming out, and we really do look forward to these awards every year, and um, we'll look forward to seeing you all next year. Thanks.